Hey, you guys, welcome back to Movement Parallels Life. I'm your coach, Kellen Mylad. Uh, I've got another natural movement workout for us today. And just real quick, I want to uh, just touch on what is this idea of natural movements? And, you know, it, it is a very broad heading. There's so many different uh, ways that we can move that could be categorized as natural movements. But I think the the thing that I really want you to focus on and take away from these videos is that movement should occur with a balance of strength and mobility and coordination and that your training should leave you feeling good. You should be energized afterwards and that's the feedback that I've gotten from a lot of you on previous videos and that's really awesome to hear. So today, more of the same. You're not gonna need any equipment for this. We're gonna be moving on the ground, so just make sure you've got some open, comfortable floor space. We're gonna begin with a nice, long warm-up, just getting acclimated to some of these movement variations. And then we'll be going into two different movement sequences. Each sequence will perform for two rounds. You'll notice that we give you some structure in the way we set things up, but we also create some space to explore and improvise with some of these movements. And I think that's another really important uh, characteristic of these natural movement workouts. It's not just an exercise with one form, but you get to start playing around with these movements and see how they fit for your body. Your goal is to make these movements more efficient, and that's gonna mean the movements look more fluid, they feel more fluid or natural. Now in the beginning when you start out, things might feel a little awkward and that's totally normal, it's totally okay. And I just encourage you to keep practicing, keep trying, and don't get too down on yourself. You know, it's really easy to let that voice in our head, you know, say, oh, I'm not doing this right, or you know, I'm terrible at this. No, none of that. Practice, practice, practice. This is movement that you can perform every day. This is nutritious movement that's going to keep your uh, muscles and your joints in good condition and just enable you to pursue any other type of uh, fitness that, that, that you want. But these are basic human movements and really you have an opportunity here to enjoy moving again. Let it be playful, let it be creative. Understand that this is a this is a big shift in in the paradigm of how we're used to thinking about fitness and exercise. This is something new. So come into it with an open mind. Have fun. If you have any questions, just let me know in the comments below. I'm happy to help you out. Thank you so much for watching. That's about all you need to know. Let's get moving. We'll start things off with our warm-up series. Two rounds. Here's the beginning of round one. We're going to start by getting connected to our breathing, some deep belly breathing, diaphragmatic breathing. Place your hands on your low abdomen, and as you inhale, feel your stomach expand into your hands. As you exhale, feel the light compression in your midsection. And I'll start to feed into that pattern, slowly expanding your breath, Feeling your stomach expand, your hands rise. And then release the breath. Feel the light compression, the squeeze from the middle of the body. Not forcing anything here, really just observing the breath, lengthening the breath, oxygenating your body, starting to set an intention for how you'll move today and what you need out of today's practice. First movement here, we're going into a long roll, extending the arms and legs, and we're gonna lead this roll by reaching the arm. Reach the arm across the body and keep reaching, keep reaching, keep reaching until you roll all the way over. And keep a little bit of tension in your core to make sure that as you roll, you don't flop over. Use the reach to create the stretch. We'll vary the pattern here just a little bit. Now instead of reaching with the arm, we're reaching with the leg. Leading the roll, 
by taking the knee up, reaching the leg across the body, and using the weight of the leg to pull us through the roll. Just good to be able to differentiate these patterns. Slightly different stretch in the body. But ultimately, we're looking to feel this connection running through the body that makes this roll light and efficient. We'll make a transition onto the hands and knees or the knee hand position and then going into some spinal articulation. You know, starting with arching the spine and rounding the spine, flexion and extension. Exhale as you round, inhale as you arch. And then as you feel comfortable, you can start expanding on those two movements, starting to rock back and forth or adding circular movements. Envision your spine inside your body and do your best to start to articulate it. Move it different ways. We'll stabilize the spine next and play around with articulating the hips with these circular actions. Imagine that you are stepping over an object. Play around with all different types of movements, circling the hip, but also extending the leg from the knee. Keep some stability through the trunk of your body and try to isolate the movement at the hip joint. See if you can get the muscles of the hip to start to activate. Can you feel your glutes? Can you feel your hamstrings? Can you feel those tiny muscles on the sides? This is just paying attention to how your body works, developing a greater understanding of how your muscles activate, what your range of motion is like, and can you make these movements fluid, connected? Can you maintain your breathing through these actions? Take this as an opportunity to follow your body. Where do you find yourself wanting to compensate? Where do you feel strong? Where do you feel weak? Begin to observe what your performance is like here and tailor these movements to help you grow stronger. Target those areas and those movements that don't feel as strong. Pay attention to the mechanics of your hips and start to identify the patterns that are going to work best for you. We're making a transition to tall kneeling next and beginning with some rotational reaching. Give yourself some context here. Imagine there's an object right behind you that you're trying to touch. Maybe even use the wall as a, as a prompt. Try performing this movement with tucked toes and flat toes. As you reach back, keep the proper amount of tension in your core and your glutes to stabilize the movement. Don't overarch into your back. Next pattern, we're going from kneeling and transitioning down to our side bent sit. You're looking to make this transition very smoothly with control through every part of the range of motion. As you're beginning, feel free to use your hands to help keep your balance and make this movement fluid and coordinated. Spend some time in the side bent position, stretching as feels appropriate for you. We transition next into the side bent sit leg sweep. You're just taking that back leg in your side bent sit and bringing it forward to the front of your body in full extension, holding it strong and sitting up tall. Sweep the leg back and forth using the strength of your hips. We're going to pair that with a cross sit position, folding forward and reaching out away from the body. This is a beautiful stretch for your hips and your back. 
sweep the arms from side to side, explore any angles, any stretches that feel relevant for you. We'll go back to our side bend sit, opposite hip position, and work our leg sweeps on the opposite side. As you wrap the leg back, try to lightly touch the ground. If you can keep your foot off the ground, even better. Just try to touch the floor with your knee and swing that leg back forward. And feel those muscles of the lateral hip light up. They'll be talking to you a little bit. This gives you feedback to know you need, probably need more of this if you're like me. Back to our cross sit position. We've got our legs crossed the opposite way this time, continuing to sweep, reach, and stretch. Transitioning next from our cross sit, we'll come into a foot hand crawl position and start to play around with our pass under transition. This pass under transition, the leg is always rotating underneath the body. We're balanced on the opposite hand and foot and initiating a rotation. Take some time to play around in the face up position, the supine or inverted crawl position jogging side to side, opening up those shoulders. See if you can begin to link together these transitions from side to side. How fluid can you make this pass under transition? Take a few seconds to go into our foot hand crawl forward and back, whatever space you've got available, start to explore this crawling movement keeping the knees low to the ground, keeping the hips and the head around the same height. Make sure your hips don't pike up in the air too high. That completes our first round. We're going to transition back to a supine position. Round two of our warm-up series. Slight variation to our long roll. We start in this tuck position. Extend the arms and legs and roll through from prone right back to supine in our tuck position. A lot of core in this movement. I love how strong and connected this one feels. The strength, the movement is completely driven by the connection through your body. Playing around with our leg reaches, arm reaches, have fun, explore this pattern, and see how fluid and connected you can make these rolls. And make sure that you can keep control of your body in the process. As the speed increases, you want to make sure that you maintain control. Observe your body going through these patterns. Start to identify what you're doing really well, where's your efficiency, and what could be improved. And it's not to hold judgment around these movements, but it's to understand that we can continually polish and refine how we're executing these patterns. Every rep offers an opportunity to learn. Press up into your knee hand position, back with our spinal articulation. Coordinate your breathing with the movements of your spine. Make the movements fluid but strong. Start to explore and experience what your spine can do. Feel these movements from the inside out. This is a really interesting concept because it's so easy for us to be self-conscious or aware of how we might be perceived when people see us doing these movements. So you want to get yourself in a comfortable space, get some time alone so you can not have to worry about 
what anyone's thinking or what's going on around you, but you can be in your body for these movements. Back with our hip articulation in this knee hand crawl position, you can start to experiment more. I always encourage you to first get a basic sense of a movement pattern, but then start to branch out, try some different things. This is where you really begin to learn about your body. So don't just take the pattern and do it mindlessly, but have a sense of curiosity around it. Always ask, what if? What are the small changes and tweaks and alterations that you can make to try something new with your movement? Play with the tempo, play with the angles. I totally get that it might feel awkward at first, but this is the learning process. This is how to develop more control, more efficiency around your movements, but also how to develop more creativity and adaptability. Let's transition back. Kneeling to side bent sit transition. Try to feel your legs pushing into the floor to control your descent down into the side bend sit and then pushing back into the floor to come up, up to the kneeling position. From kneeling, go back into our rotational reaching. This is a great variation to explore your full range of motion. Use your reach to create a strong stretch in your body. Feel how reaching to your limits requires a great deal of strength and connection through your body. Start to feel that, embrace that, understand that because it's applicable in just about every movement that we go through. Even these seated positions require a degree of activation and effort. It's, it's rarely just a passive position that we're putting ourselves in, but how can you engage your body to make the position better, stronger? Transitioning into our leg sweeps, working those lateral hips, strength of the core, strength of the hips, coordinated movement, maybe even starting to play around with articulating the ankle. Blend in your cross-sit reaching, fold forward, rotate, reach. Pay attention to coordinating your breathing and making sure that you're still breathing deeply even when you're in a position like this where you're somewhat constricted. Switch your cross-sit back to the opposite side on the side bent sit. Work those leg sweeps again. Never a passive position here. Always using strength and control around your movements. If it's feeling easy, you're missing something. You're leaving something on the table. Feel how you can work, create effort and intention around your movements. From your cross sit, rock forward, transition into your foot hand crawl position. And we'll resume working on our pass under transitions. As you rotate from face down to face up, from face up to face down, stabilize each of those positions. Find strength in your foot hand or your inverted crawl position. Work to make the transition strong and stable by pushing into the ground especially through the arms. You're never collapsing or melting into the floor, but always pushing strongly into the earth. And this push will result in a feeling of lightness that's going to allow you to move more fluidly. 
We'll return to our foot hand crawl, maybe trying a variation on your forearms as if you were crawling under an obstacle. Pay attention to how you'll use your effort and strength to stabilize the position, but also be relaxed in your movements. Finding this blend is essential to moving more efficiently. That brings us to the end of our warm-up series. Let's just take a few moments to recover. Find a seated position and get back to your deep diaphragmatic breathing. Take a moment to have an honest check-in with where your body's at and use that to set an intention for the remainder of your practice today. As we transition out of our warm-up, we're going to go into a standing series. We've created a lot of stability in our ground-based movements, and now we're going to just expand that with a standing series, beginning with standing spinal articulations. I'm well aware of how weird this looks, um, but I think you'll also find that it feels amazing. Same idea here. You're envisioning your spine and starting to articulate it, bend it, flex it, extend it, twist it different ways. Experience your spine from the inside out. Try to imagine a wave rolling through your body, softening your spine with every undulation. We're going to move into a spiraling arm circle next. I sometimes call these teacup arm circles and again this is just something to start to play around with essentially reaching in different directions and starting to rotate spin spiral around for the sake of developing more mobility through the shoulder girdle and the spine you can imagine holding a saucer and a teacup balanced on your palm and try to maintain that balance as you spiral and circle around without spilling a drop. Start with a very small controlled spiral and then you can start to expand on the movement. You can reach further away from your body. You can begin shifting your weight more. You can start changing levels coming down to a kneeling position. If nothing else, just try to find a smooth, coordinated, rhythmic action with this pattern. It doesn't have to be anything as elaborate as what you see me doing, but just start simply. Allow yourself to fall into the rhythm of the movement. And as you get absorbed into the pattern, you start to experience just how meditative a movement like this can be. so interesting to recognize how the standing practice expands on the ground practice. Similar patterns, similar demands, but the more you practice, the more you start to see beyond the individual techniques and it all starts to blend together, the dots connect, and it becomes the practice of movement. In the last part of our standing series, we'll get into some squatting patterns, beginning with a wide stance and going into some lateral shifting. Drop down into a deep squat, maybe pry the knees open, rotate side to side, breathe deeply. And you can move in and out of these patterns, add in any reaches that feel right for you reaching side to side as you shift, reaching overhead maybe. I'm gonna throw in these crossover lunges. Anytime I'm stepping past the midline of the body, just getting the hips to be stronger in different positions, finding stability challenges in different positions. The really big piece for me is not just getting into the position, but transitioning in and out of the position, moving around, changing shapes and positions freely and fluidly. 
to me, this adaptability and this fluidity is really the hallmark of a natural movement practice. So that's going to wrap our opening portion of the session today. You can feel free to pause and take a little break, or we can jump right into the first of two movement flows. Now we're getting into the heart of our session today with two movement flows, four movements a piece, two rounds each. First pattern is this kneeling getup. From a kneeling position, the toes tuck, we come back into a knee bend and then up to standing. As I stand, I like to switch my feet around, do more than just stand straight up, but I wanna step, I wanna move, I wanna rotate, I wanna add some element of variability. Something that suggests that after I get up, I'm going to do something else. So expanding the ends of the movement here. Incorporate a half kneeling step out and transition to standing and change your position, practice your fluidity. Transition next to a foot hand crawl in a circling pattern. You're trying to think about crawling around or rotating around a central axis here. So your opposite hand and foot move at the same time. As you get acclimated to this pattern, start to expand it a little bit, start to play around. Use this as a tool to change your orientation but start to use that tool seamlessly in with your crawling pattern. Don't put yourself in the box, but start exploring once you feel comfortable. Start expanding your comfort zone with these movement patterns. Additional movements like overhead reaches can also be thrown in the mix here as a way to continue to develop more stability and mobility in your body. We'll make a transition onto our back. Bridge reach to rock up. As I rock back into my bridge, planting my feet, driving my hips up and reaching for an object overhead. As I rock up, I'm leaning forward from the hips Still making sure to lengthen the spine and reach forward or reach overhead. Play around with linking together these two patterns, coordinating your breath with the movements, and exploring what variations you need to give you the stretch, to give you the sensations, that are gonna work best for you. Changing patterns to a supine foot reach here. So it just means you're laying on your back and think about reaching your feet in different directions. Reach across the body. Maybe reach back overhead and maybe start to incorporate some rotational rocking, things that we've done from previous videos. Whatever you choose to play around with, just make sure that you're demonstrating control around your movements. Start basic and then expand outward from there. Notice how the foot reach is a lot like our long roll from earlier. We're using the reach to drive the roll and that can bring us back into position to get ready for the second round of this first series. We're back with our kneeling get up. Play around half kneeling position, kneeling rotation reaches. This is where we start to tie in these variations that we see early on in the session or from previous sessions. This is how the movement vocabulary begins to expand when we start to play around. 
use this second round as a chance to add more intensity or complexity to your movements. Try something new or speed up. It all comes back to what your intention was, both when we started and then when we got through the workout. What do you need out of this practice? And how can you go get it? Transition from kneeling to crawling, circling. Keep a good rhythm. Make sure that you're breathing and incorporate your rotational reaches. I'm going to add some variation for this second round. I'm going to spend a little bit more time with those overhead reaches, playing around with my shoulder stability, dropping my hips and creating some stretch through my side body. Challenge yourself to use this whole period of time to keep moving in a crawling pattern. We spent time in the opening phase of the session working on the basics. Once those basics are dialed in, it's your opportunity to start creating, start pushing the limits of that basic form and starting to see what else that you can create and where else you can explore. Transitioning back to our bridge reaching and rock up reaching. Feel free to linger in either one of these positions, which feels more important to you today, and also try to connect these movements. Work on isolating the transitions until you're able to seamlessly float between the bridge and the bent sit position. Put effort and intention into every reach. It's not enough to simply go through the motions. Your intention has to be there. Your focus has to be there. And you're being mindful, not only of what's going on in your environment, but also mindful of what's going on inside your body. We're back on our foot reaching. Rock back, reach behind your head, reach to the sides, twisting and rolling your body more. Use your rotations, start to expand, play around. You might even experiment with reaching up towards the sky. Notice that the further you reach, the more strength you need to pull back out of that reach. Challenge yourself to use your hands as little as possible, but use other areas of your body for support and for balance. Rely on the strength and the connection of the core to help stabilize you through some of these movements and to switch your patterns often. Take a few moments to collect yourself, get a sip of water, maybe hit that pause button if you want to linger a little bit longer. Otherwise, we're going to roll right into the second series. All right, let's start in on our second series. We're going to begin with side bend sit hip switches. So maybe making this a little bit more dynamic or taking that same slow and controlled approach that we did earlier. I'm really trying to emphasize the reach here and just starting to play around with some different expressions of this pattern. I've been playing with these ground-based movements for, uh, for years now, but I still find different angles, different variations, and little twists to put on things. So this time I was really working on completing the switch and adding a really dynamic reach, stretching as far as I could. So the more you practice, the more you find these little variations. You'll always be able to find something new, even though you're repeating these movements over and over. That's where the goodness lies. So we've got this inverted crawl position next, playing around with lifting the hips, playing around with 
some internal rotation of the hips as the knee falls inward towards the midline of the body. And of course, throwing in some reaching patterns as you see fit. So just get in this inverted crawl position. Again, you're actively pushing into the ground, never collapsing into the shoulders. Start moving around in space and playing with these different variations, extending the hips, rotating the hips, or going into a reach. From here, we'll make an easy transition into a rock up into a tripod. So again, this tripod is supporting yourself on opposite hand and foot. Working on dynamically transitioning into that position and still being able to maintain stability. As you get the hang of this, you can start to play around with that extended leg, drawing it in and extending it a few times. Challenge your stability by pivoting on your shoulder slightly, rotating as you extend the leg. And of course, changing your orientation as you rock back, pivoting your hips and starting to incorporate some of that rotational rocking. This is just a fun one to start to play around with. And as you complete these last few repetitions, make sure that your position stays strong. Your arm stays in the locked out position and that you're not collapsing into your shoulder. Each repetition deserves the highest possible quality. And from there, we can make a transition to a foot hand crawl and start to play around with our crawling get up. So basically what that looks like is from a crawl, you're walking the hands back towards the feet, transitioning into more of a squat position, and then standing up. The idea here is to float in and out of the crawl get up, to seamlessly transition from standing to crawling, from crawling to standing. As always, we're working to adapt the pattern don't just move in straight lines but crawl your way down to the ground change orientation pay attention to how you're contacting the ground how you're creating new points of support pay attention to your breathing pay attention to the balance between tension and relaxation be mindful and notice if you feel any impact in your body or you hear any impact from your hands and feet hitting the ground. There shouldn't be any excessive noise here. Your efficiency will be evidenced by smooth movement and lightness in the movement. You might not be able to keep that up for very long, but short bursts of high quality movement are the way to go. Okay, let's run it back for round two of the second series. Beginning with side bend sit hip switches. What variations will you add in? What flare style expression do you want to add to this movement pattern? Add variety, but keep the movement sharp. Feel each repetition. Examine if there's any differences going on between the right and left sides. If this movement feels dialed in, if you're confident, it can be your opportunity to start to speed things up and add more intensity if that's what you're looking for out of today's practice. Transitioning next into your inverted crawl position. We're going back with those three variations on the movement, the hip lift, the internal rotation, and the reaching patterns. Switch your style up a little bit this second round. Try something new. 
elaborate or expand on what you did in the first round. And again, stay mindful of what is going to serve your body best. A lot of times for me, it's working on mobilizing my hips. Sometimes it's working those high hip lifts so I can get a nice, strong stretch through my chest and shoulders. Whatever's going to be in your best interest right now, you make that call. Stay intentional. Stay connected to your breath. We're making the transition next. Rock up to tripod. This round I'm adding a little bit more movement coming up into my tripod, drawing the leg back underneath me, maybe reaching back behind my body, and then extending the leg back forward before I sit and transition back into my rock. Using the rotation of my hips, I can change my orientation. I also make it a point to alternate sides and make sure that the action feels as comfortable on my dominant side as it does on my non-dominant side. I'm trying to feel if the mechanics are consistent. So just playing around with the last rep here. We're going to take that tripod transition into a foot hand crawl and then start to work that crawling get up again. Set an intention for what you're doing here. Is it going to be quick? Is it going to be high intensity or is it going to be slow and methodical? At this point, I'm really slowing things down. Lowering my center of gravity, placing my hands on the ground, and smoothly transitioning into the foot hand crawl. One efficiency check is to make sure that you're in a good position, in a good enough position to always be aware of what's going on in your surroundings. As long as your spine is elongated and you've got full ability to turn your head and scan your environment, it's a pretty good bet that you're moving somewhat efficiently. And we've made it through our work sets. We're going to finish with just a little bit of a cool down. And of course, getting back to our diaphragmatic breathing. Find a comfortable seated position or feel free to lie down. Whatever's going to be comfortable for you, but this is a moment of stillness, a moment to go inside your body and to focus on calming down your physiology, using your breath as a tool to feed your recovery. So enjoy this time and just focus on the sensations of inhaling and exhaling. I'll make a transition here to a prone position. Work on a little bit more diaphragmatic breathing or crocodile breathing. I'm using the floor to give me some feedback so I can feel the full expansion of my midsection and the compression. If it works for you, if it makes your spine happy to play around with some spinal extension, by all means, join me. If you're experiencing any pain or discomfort here, if it's just too intense, you can find ways to modify or just skip it altogether. I'm transitioning back to my long sit next. Some head rolls some spinal work, just trying to release some of the tension that accumulates from the more vigorous practice. Always taking time to release that tension. It's really simple strategies, but very powerful, very key to the recovery process. And I'm going to start adding in some forward folds. Feeling 
a little tight here. I haven't been practicing these as much recently. But now is a great time to work on a little bit more flexibility focus, holding these positions longer, stretching. We've been moving for about 45 minutes now, and our muscles are nice and supple. Our joints are nice and mobilized and lubricated. So this is a great time to find those areas of tightness. And through the stretched position and through the breathing, find a release. Let some of the tension and the restriction just melt away. Now that's just about it for our extra long practice today. If you made it this far, congratulations. Um, again, as always, it's such an honor to share these movements and these practices with you. Natural movement has added so much value to my life, and I really hope that you keep exploring and have the same experience. So once again, thank you so much for watching. If you enjoyed this, you know, please hit the subscribe button. Please leave a comment below. And until next time, keep moving and love your practice.